Welcome to Pan Am Football with Max Dean. This week's video is going to cover the salary cap situation for the Atlanta Falcons, and of course the contracts of the Falcons' top players, particularly Matt Ryan and Julio Jones. I'll talk about their current situation, how they got here, and what they can and likely will do going forward. Before we get started, putting these videos together takes quite a bit of time and effort, so if you can toss a like my way, that helps a lot. And if you enjoy the video, subscribe for weekly NFL content. Any interaction or questions are welcome, and I will take requests for video topics. If you find yourself unfamiliar with any of the terms I use today, you can check out my How the NFL Salary Cap Works video, linked in the description below. Now, I'd like to prime you all with a quick reminder of what accelerated proration is in an NFL contract. Essentially, when a contract with a prorated type of bonus is signed, that bonus is paid up front as a signing or option bonus. However, its effect on the cap is evenly distributed over the remaining life of the contract for up to five years. If a player is released or traded, all of the remaining bonus affects the cap that year. I bring this up now because, as you will see, it is relevant for all of these contracts. So here we are in Atlanta. The Atlanta Falcons are sitting at a 2-6 record at the time this video was produced, and they have recently fired both their general manager, Thomas Dimitrov, and head coach, Dan Quinn. Questions are swirling about the future of the franchise, and of course their star quarterback, Matt Ryan, and all-pro wide receiver, Julio Jones. Today I will explain what the Falcons' situation truly is, and what are the possible and likely decisions that the team will have to make going forward. The first thing that we're going to do is take a quick look at who we will be talking about, and what their average salaries are. And I want to thank Spotrack.com and OverTheCap.com, where all of today's info is coming from. We have quarterback Matt Ryan, $30 million per year, 10th highest paid. Wide receiver Julio Jones, $22 million per year, second highest paid, and really the first, based on the way that I look at the DeAndre Hopkins contract, but we'll talk about that another time. Defensive tackle Grady Jarrett, $17 million per year, sixth highest paid. Defensive end Dante Fowler Jr., $15 million per year, 17th highest paid. Left tackle Jake Matthews, $14.5 million per year, eighth highest paid. And linebacker Deion Jones, $14.25 million per year, 12th highest paid. So when I'm saying highest paid, that's all uh, in relation to the other players at their position, not the highest paid on the Falcons. So let's take a look at the cap hits for these six players over the next few years, through 2023 to be exact. First, take a look at the cap hits for these players in the year 2020. Then... Take a look at the cap hits for these players in 2021. As you can see, every player's cap hit increases, many to nearly double, and Dante Fowler Jr. nearly tripling. With the salary cap potentially being as low as $175 million in 2021, the current total here for only six players is untenable. It would be nearly 78% of the salary cap for only 11% of the roster. With the Falcons' salary cap in the red by an estimated $25.25 million for 2021, the Falcons have to make moves that lower their cap hits and become compliant with the cap limit. So let's take a look at what they can do with each of these players. Let's save Matt Ryan and Julio Jones for a little bit later and first take a look at Grady Jarrett. His contract is pretty straightforward with evenly distributed prorated bonuses of $7.333 million per year. For the sake of simplicity, we're not going to separate initial signing bonuses, option bonuses, or restructured bonuses, since they all have the same prorated effect for our purposes today. However, when looking at this 2021 cap hit, $4.5 million of his base salary is guaranteed meaning that it will be paid to him even if he was released after the 2020 season. Cutting Jarrett makes no sense financially or in terms of value, since he is a good enough player to garner value in a trade. 
Trading Jarrett would cause his 2022 prorated bonuses to accelerate to 2021, adding $7.333 million to his cap hit. However, all $13.5 million of his base salary in 2021 would transfer to the new team, garnering the Falcons with a net cap gain of $6.167 million in 2021. The Falcons could get more cap space in 2021 if they waited until after June 1st to trade him because that alters the effect of acceleration of proration. However, they need to be cap compliant at the start of the new league year, and considering their dire situation, this is not likely an option for them. So even if they traded Jarrett, that leaves them at an estimated $19.083 million in the red for 2021. Now let's take a look at Jake Matthews, their high-priced left tackle. Matthews does not have any more fully guaranteed salary beyond 2020, so the only dead money to consider are the prorated bonuses. With Matthews under contract all the way through 2023, a trade in 2021 would cause an extra cap charge of $11,656,700, but would simultaneously relieve all of his 2021 base salary, which would overall save the team a meager $1,343,300. At this point, the Falcons would have traded two of their better players and are still approximately $17.74 million in the red. Let's move on to linebacker Deion Jones. Jones does not have any fully guaranteed salary remaining either, however, His full 2021 base salary becomes guaranteed very early in the 2021 league year, meaning there is a time crunch for any decision to be made with Jones. Just as with the previous two players, trading Jones would cause the prorated bonuses to accelerate, thus increasing his cap hit by $7.9 million, while letting the team escape his base salary and per game roster bonuses for a total savings of $0.78 million. Well, the talent on the roster is getting pretty sparse, and the Falcons are still an estimated $17 million in the red for 2021. Let's talk Dante Fowler Jr., who received a three-year contract as a free agent just this past offseason. Fowler has $6 million of his base salary fully guaranteed in 2021, and a few days into the new league year, the remaining $7 million also becomes fully guaranteed. Like Jones, this forces a time crunch decision to be made on Fowler. If he were to be traded, the Falcons would move on from all of his base salary and per game roster bonuses and only take an additional hit of $4,666,666 for a total savings of $9,333,331 in 2021. You might be saying, hey Max, that's something, almost $10 million in savings. Well, that is dependent on a team actually trading for Dante Fowler Jr. And at least in my opinion, I don't see a team interested in taking on what I consider to be a bloated salary for Fowler in a, in a cap-strapped year. Yes, he is playing on a bad defense, but what he is being paid indicates he should be making a significant impact on the field, which he is not, at least not in any consistent way. Let's assume for argument's sake that someone actually takes him off the Falcons' hands, which would leave the Falcons at close to $7.5 million in the red. This leaves us with the big fish, Matt Ryan and Julio Jones. Big-time payment could mean big-time money off the books, right? Well, no at least not in 2021, when it really matters. The remaining prorated bonuses on Jones' contract is essentially equitable with the base salary that the Falcons would avoid in a trade, and the Falcons would actually lose $200,000 in cap space by trading him. So, yeah, pretty unhelpful. Finally, we arrive at Matt Ryan. I don't want to get too repetitive, so suffice it to say that this prorated money is more than this base salary and the trade of Ryan would cost the Falcons an extra $3.535 million against the cap, putting them back over $10 million in the red. 
Using post-June 1st cuts or trades in this scenario would not help because the Falcons have to be under the cap months before that is even an option. How far in the red they are could vary depending on if the salary cap ends up being a bit higher, but it is very unlikely that it would be high enough to change the general situation. So what can the Falcons do? Well, their only real options are to double down with Matt Ryan and Julio Jones. Ryan's and Jones' cap hit currently total just about $64 million for 2021, and by restructuring their salaries into bonuses, that can be brought down to about $40 million, which basically brings the Falcons into cap compliance with just these two moves. They will still need more space, and you will likely see some veteran cuts and a trade or two, but ultimately the Falcons simply do not have the option to fully tear things down anytime soon and you certainly won't see Jones or Ryan with another franchise in 2021. What I consider to be the most likely course of events is a restructure for both Matt Ryan and Julio Jones. Of the remaining four players we talked about, I don't think Grady Jarrett moves on, and you might even see a restructure or a short extension for him. Jake Matthews, I also don't see going anywhere, although I'm not sure if you would want to mess with his contract with a restructure if you don't absolutely have to. A trade of Deion Jones doesn't really save the Falcons any money unless a team decides to go for him after the draft, but at that point it may just be better to have him on the roster. Fowler is the one I think is most likely to go. It's also the contract that I think was the nail in the coffin for Thomas Dimitrov, although maybe he would have been released anyway. Now, if you do the Ryan and Jones restructures and then make enough other moves with middle-tier veterans like Tyler Davison and James Carpenter, you might end up with the flexibility to keep Fowler around long enough to get past June 1st. If you do that, they might be able to lure another team into taking him off their hands if the Falcons agree to pay part of his 2021 salary. With a post-June 1st trade, the Falcons could get a future draft pick and save something like $10 million in 2021, perhaps more, depending on how much of Fowler's salary they took on. The fact that Dimitrov added Fowler to a lengthy list of high-priced Falcons players is a clear indication that he was seeing what he wanted to see when looking at his own roster versus seeing what was actually there. Dimitrov had a nice run, but it seems to me that he had gotten to the point of not being able to see the reality of the situation through his dirty bird-covered glasses. Knowing the Falcons' tight cap situation and still going after Fowler was what I see as one last ill-advised swing for the fences by a GM on the hot seat. The new general manager who steps in will have the responsibility of working with the current core of the roster while gradually phasing them out for a new, younger core, and the new coach will have the job of working with Matt Ryan and Julio Jones for at least one or two years as the roster is restocked. Some of you may be glad to hear that, and some of you may be frustrated, but Thomas Dimitrov's parting gift was a bounty of inflexibility. Thanks for watching, and remember, like, subscribe, and request any topics you'd like to see a video for.